Hey, what's up guys? This is Sam here with CustomPCReview.com here at CES 2013 and we're at the Corsair suite and uh, we have one of their marketing guys here. So sir, what is your name and what do you do at Corsair? I'm Jared Peck and I'm the uh, senior uh, senior manager for the gaming peripherals, but also talking a little bit about some other products today. Okay, so you're not a marketing guy. You're like the, the product manager then. Uh, product manager marketing guy yes okay all right excellent so um, he's gonna show us some of the cool new stuff coming out uh, for Coursera at least uh, just announced at CES um, this year so uh, what do you have here so I'm actually showing the uh, Voyager Air and it's one of our uh, up-and-coming new products it's actually very uh, a new approach or a new new product category for us uh, what's cool about it is that it actually is is a like a wireless NAS it's portable storage that can sit on your your uh, home network you load up all of your content, you keep all of your pictures, movies, whatever you want there, and then you can take it on the go and use it. And it can uh, connect wirelessly then to your, um, connects to your phone, connects to your iPad, connects to your Android dev device, and really lets you enjoy all of that uh, content anywhere you want. Okay, all right. Uh, can you walk us through this thing real quick? It looks like you guys got a couple lights up here, you got some ports back here, so. Yeah, so actually lights up there and ports back there. The most important thing to start with is actually ports back there. So what's cool about Voyager Air is that it actually has an Ethernet port. Um, it's meant to meld into your home network. It's meant to be where your stuff stays all the time, not not just a place where you go and you load up some content. Uh, you know, it's not just do I pick the two or three movies I want to watch this week. It's it's where your movies live. That means that when you head out of the house, you grab it, you take it with you, you go in the car, uh, you got the kids in the back, and they want to watch three different movies, five different movies, seven different movies, whatever is going on, you know. All of that is built into the drive and ready to go. Okay, great. And it looks like you guys got USB 3.0 support as well and a power port? Oh, absolutely. So we talk about that, uh, yeah, it, it is going to be plugging into power so that you have the ability to recharge. It lasts about uh, seven hours on a charge with multiple streams. I think it's uh, up to five or five or seven different HD streams that you can use at one time. And obviously you have the USB to be able to load it, but... Uh, but, you know, really, at the end of the day, once it lives on the network, you can just load it over either the network or USB, whatever works for you. Okay, great. And uh, all these lights up here, any information about that? Sim simple lights up here. It's power, mm. on and off. Uh, obviously, you want to be able to uh, conserve the battery. Kind of just a the switch there, then? Just okay. a switch. And a wireless. And so, again, the wireless, when you take it home uh, and it's connected to your network, there's no reason to have one additional uh, Wi-Fi hub running in it. But... Um, but when you're uh, when you're on the go, you can flip that on and off uh, so that you have the ability to connect and use it. So. Okay, and um, for this product right here, any capacity information is you know hard drive, solid state. Right. So it is it is a hard drive, and we are going to make these available in uh, 500 gigabyte as well as terabyte. Okay. Any information on availability pricing? I think availability on this one is going to be in February. Uh, final pricing, I'm not certain on. I don't know whether that's been announced yet. So. Okay. All right. Cool. So looks like you guys got a couple new products back here as well. Um, some mechanical keyboards, some headsets. You guys got some gaming mice as well. Um, why don't you take take it away with this first keyboard you guys got here? This is a new introduction, right? Yeah, this one was one that was announced uh, just at CES here. Uh, and keyboards and mice. This is my core. So love to talk about this with you guys. Uh, K95 is going to be our new flagship part. Uh, our new flagship keyboard and what it does is it uh, addresses some of the things that people loved and didn't love as much on the K90s. So K90 was, was great and we so listening to customer feedback of course. Always have to listen to customer feedback. You guys at the end of the day make the decision about what we make. So <laughs> Excellent, excellent. So what are the changes that you've made to uh, this K95? So K95 the first thing is that one of the one of the things that people ask about was why isn't it all mechanical? K90, we, we made some decisions where we said macro keys, not not uh, mechanical, did rubber domes under them, and a few of the other keys that are less used. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, customers uh, want all fully mechanical, we're going to make fully mechanical. Every one of these is a cherry red switch underneath it, uh, all the way down to uh, the G keys. So, Looks really like it's also individually backlit as well? Yeah, uh, individually backlit and actually controllable that way. So what's cool about K95 is that you actually have the ability to go in and map out individual keys that you want turned off. So say I'm playing a first-person shooter game, great. I can, uh, you know, get my WSD all lit up in the dimly lit room, easy to find, great to uh, be able to control. Uh, same thing if I want to set certain macros on here. Maybe I've only got three of the macros set. I can have it light up and just show the macros that are actually in use right now. Uh, now, does that disable the key, or is it just uh, just turning off the lighting on that? 
This is just turning off the lighting. Uh, this doesn't disable it, so it's still gonna work. It's just to make it easier for you to find exactly which keys. So it's a mental cue for you on that. Uh, okay. The other thing that's cool about it, though, is that as with K90, you actually have the ability to set your macro keys in three different banks, M1, M2, and M3. The light maps also work that way. So maybe you have M1 set for Counter-Strike Go, and you have the keys that you're going to use most actively there, as well as your macros. You have another setting in uh, for World of Warcraft, and again, exactly the right keys for what you're going to play. Uh, so really, it's up to you. It's flexible. It's however you want to have it set, but you can have it set and you can have it saved to where once you've configured it, you can flip it one button and use it again. Excellent. Okay. Any uh, USB pass-throughs, um, uh, audio jacks, anything like that on this keyboard? So with uh, as with K90, we have a USB pass-through in this, mm -hmm. um, and that's that's uh, that's really the core on that one. We don't have the audio, but we do have the, uh, the USB pass-through, which you think is uh, one of the really great and easy to use ones on that. Okay, all right. Um, looks like you guys got a couple gaming mice over here. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. So uh, we've got we've actually announced two different uh, two different on the game, the gaming mice. One is the uh, M95, and M95 builds on what we did with an M90 before. You guys, feel free to take a look at that guy. So what we've done with the M95 is we've updated the sensor to the newest, the latest and greatest. So the, we were using ADS, ADNS uh, 9500, um, we've moved up to the ADNS 9800. What that means to end users is it's an 8200 DPI mouse. It's uh, really, really high resolution uh, and it has uh, been tuned for gaming, so really good sensor for that. The other things we've done on it is uh, we've updated the switches, so it goes to 20 million uh, click switches underneath, uh, which means not that you were ever going to wear out your mouse otherwise, mm -hmm. but these are really, you know, great switches, good feel, uh, and very durable. Before you really, really never wear that out. Uh, and what's really cool on the uh, M95 is we've actually retooled the way that the the feel is on the side. So when you look at that bank of all of your programmable uh, macro buttons on the side of the mouse, the feel is just a little bit better. Uh, the feel is uh, not so hard to push as it would have been on the original M90. But just a perfect feel and still crisp and not not uh, no mushiness to it. So excellent. And the software has also been retuned as well. Absolutely, we updated the software so uh, addressed uh, some of the things that again that customers wanted in the original M90 software. So M95 ships out of the gate with that. Okay, excellent. And M95 is uh, available uh, a bit later, so M95 will be shipping next month. Any pricing information on this? Uh, M95 will be uh, 79.99 uh, US. Okay, great. Um, looks like you guys have an update to the M60, M60 as well, right? Yeah, so the M60, uh, what we've done with that is uh, we've taken that same sensor. We've moved the uh, M60 to M65 up to an 800 DPI sensor, which is great for first-person shooter type gaming, which is what this mouse is designed for. The other thing we've done is we have, uh, again, reworked the tooling on this button. So the sniper button now is a very, very good feel, <laughs> easy to push. But you know, far enough out of your out of the way of your thumb that it's just an easy reach to make. So you don't accidentally hit it. You so know. You don't yeah. accidentally hit it. Yeah, we do want to make sure that it's not uh, in the way all the time because that sniper function is great when you're trying to make the shot. But uh, I've actually found the, these are great for uh, just having the sniper button. You know, it's great even in Photoshop when you kind of need to lower the DPI a little bit to get some of those fine movements in there. So absolutely, I think it's uh, multifunctional when we get to get into that. So absolutely. Okay. Any uh, release release date on the new so the, the m65 is actually uh, available now it's starting to ship uh, as we okay. speak and uh, we will have it available in the traditional black as well as the uh, some new colors green as well. yeah so we have a military green and we have the arctic white so those are kind of designed to match your rig uh, we know at the end of the day that when you're building something custom you want to make sure everything matches and uh, mice go with that okay uh, pricing on the m65 M65s will be sixty nine ninety nine. So again, uh, replacing a prior price point that we had with the M60s. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else you'd like to show us? The mouse pad we have a couple or a of couple headsets? headsets. We'll talk a little bit about the mouse mat. So on the mouse mat, um, you guys may or may not know that we've been in, in the mouse mat business about two months. So we have started to ship. So relatively new then. Relatively new in the space, but uh, you know we always take the Corsair approach, and that is build the thing that uh, that's going to give people the best experience. Build the thing that we'd want as gamers ourselves, and that's uh, that's the cool part about our new flag ship here with the uh, MM600. What we've done is it's a metal core dual-sided mouse mat. Uh, the metal is there primarily because it gives you a solid flat surface. That means that it's not going to interfere in any way. The, the, the real key is the dual surfaces. You have one nice kind of uh, um, coarse surface here that's going to give you great accuracy and give you the ability to uh, to really you know slow down and make the fine movements. 
you've got a really, really slick surface here for when you're wanting to actually move fast and do sniping and do different things like that. So really giving you the best of both worlds depending on the game you're playing, depending on the style you're playing today. So your basically mouse. you've got one control surface on this side and then one more optimized for speed. Absolutely. Okay, great. Um, and when is that available? Any pricing? This is also going to be in February and it's uh, 39.99 street. So. Okay, all right, and you guys have two more headsets up there? Yeah, and on the headsets, it's not that we're announcing a new headset, it's that we're actually going back and again trying to uh, trying to give customers something that they've been asking for. And so on the Vengeance 2000, it's been out since about May, uh, and one of the things that we've gotten feedback on is people would love to see Dolby. We've had Dolby in the uh, other headset, uh, so we're actually adding Dolby support. We're gonna do that via free download, so all of our existing V2000 customers get Dolby support, uh, and then uh, all of the ongoing new ones will. The cool so a free upgrade then? free upgrade <laughs> and the cool thing about Dolby is that uh, you get you get really good um, you get really good compatibility in your games so for anyone who's had any kind of hiccups or questions on multi-channel games this is something that should address it uh, and, and be a good experience for them okay great um, looks like you guys have some more stuff going on over here absolutely so and this is just kind of a general uh, general thing we want to make people aware of but with with uh, Last, last uh, year we were actually, uh, in August, we actually acquired a company in Germany called Raptor Gaming. Uh, Raptor Gaming is a, a made for gamers, by gamers kind of company, you know, mm -hmm. built from the ground up. And so what we've done is we've worked with those guys, uh, we've incorporated a lot of things in the line and we're going to be starting to ship our Corsair Raptor branded parts. Uh, mm -hmm. Essentially we're starting to ship right about now and they'll start to show up in certain channels in the US and in Germany um, in the next uh, couple of weeks. Okay. And we'll have a complete set of uh, mice and headsets and uh, some keyboards and things coming as well. So continue to look and see where we grow on both the Vengeance and the Raptor side uh, of uh, parts. Okay, great. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to show us around this booth or does that kind of wrap it up here? Uh, that's, I think, the highlights of what we announced here. So uh, if you guys have any other questions, thoughts, happy to, uh, happy to talk to those. Okay. All right. Um, any contact information for you? Uh, Facebook, Twitter, um, you know, website? Def definitely uh, check us out at uh, Corsair.com or, uh, or definitely on Facebook. Uh, we, all, all of the newest, latest, and greatest information is on Facebook for uh, our Corsair page. So come by, like us, and uh, see, what we've got to, see what we've got to share today. Okay. Excellent. Appreciate the interview. And I'll catch you guys later for more coverage on CES 2013.